could just grab the lot and just run. And the people behind it couldn't give a toss. I was going in there every single day, like sometimes twice a day, and I just didn't care. There's one theft every 10 seconds. And they just put the tellies in the trolley and just push them out the shop. Four million offences every year, and for many, it's a career. I just got into it because I know there's loads of money to be made. These are the UK criminals who are shoplifters and proud. Meet Jade Underwood, one of Britain's most prolific shoplifters and a bit of a local celebrity. Hi! <laughs> you alright, yeah? Now I drop your autograph. <laughs> she's 23, unemployed, and her reputation means she's got friends everywhere. <laughs> so everyone knows me on air. You just know me, but I'm not as bad as everyone makes out, you know? On the streets of this Stockport council estate, everyone's on about her talents. Hiya. Especially cousin Sasha, who's more than happy to buy stuff that Jade's pinched. I ain't paying fucking fifteen pound for a bottle of makeup when I can get her to rob it from me. She's pinched it, obviously from boots or something. You know Jade, Phoebe, little cow. Try and get one of them as well if you can. One of them, a dark one of them. But it's decent. She got some right makeup for me. I'll buy it, like anyone else would, wouldn't they? Buy it off her, about three quid, give her a couple of fags. She's laughing, isn't she? The ass is falling off the seat. I've got some money for that. Jade got her dubious reputation when she was given a Crasbo, a crime and antisocial behaviour order. It banned her from 80 shops in a local town centre. She also has a two year suspended sentence. Wow. <laughs> I can't rap for MC. But the woman branded a real life Vicky Pollard, well, she just ain't bothered. I'm not really asked what people think about me. I get most people saying, oh, look at her, tramp, she's on a crash ball, so what, mate? <laughs> it's a crash ball. Is it? Being naughty. Oh. <laughs> Shot with them. Out there? Nah, I'm allowed in there, you know. <laughs> That's the only one I am allowed in. Today, Jade's on her way to meet her probation officer. If she tows the line, she might just escape another spell in jail. And she'll drink to that. First drink that today. Yeah. I was trying to keep myself sober. The route takes Jade past shops she's banned from, and her mug shots are in the window. There's one in my car. There's one in next. Um, and one in the back of boots or something. So I didn't think it'd go this bad. There's one of them. Everywhere around Stockport, they proper hotted me out. <laughs> Told you it was horrendous. <laughs> Bad, innit? About four shoplifters a day are collared in Stockport, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Everyone there knows Jade, so now she travels to neighbouring towns to steal. But the shoplifting, that everyone does that for a living. But mine's gone too far. <laughs> There's not one day gone by this week where I've just not shot there. See something and you want it, obviously you can't afford it, you just take it. I'll go in the shop with £100 in my pocket and I'll still do it. I don't want to do it, but I, you know, it's just an habit. Jade's been given every chance to avoid another spell behind bars. But it's not just the shoplifting that's causing her problems. Idiot. Talking to like that, mate. What? You little... What? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Well, back off, you little dickhead. Jane, please come in here. Wow. First fucking argument I've had today in town. He was cheeky and wanted it. A little nugget. So I just told him to shut his mouth. Called him a piss ad. He's stunk anyway, mate, and he's got a bath. Got a bad temper. If someone says the wrong thing to me, I just pull out off the handles. Jade wants to change her life. But for her, that's easier said than done. I'd love to just be a normal girl and obviously get on my life, go college, something, but where I live and that, you just, you just can't do because I can't help myself. So, Britain is a nation of shoplifters. It's one of our most common crimes. 
more than 4 million offences each year. And all the stuff nicked is worth a total of 1.3 billion quid. Thanks in part to guys like Owen Brazil. We've got a boots here. Uh, me and a few friends have been in here many a times. We've got toys out of us. Uh, I can't really go back in there anymore because uh, I got sort of caught in the acts. So uh, basically, they, uh, they know me. We was getting these portable DVD players out there for cars, the 60 quid each. With Asda, what I was doing at one point, I was going in there every single day, like sometimes twice a day, and I just didn't care. I was just coming out with like 150, 200 pounds worth of shopping, you know, each time, just like that, bam, bam, straight out. For the last year and a half, Owen's been relentless. Shoplifting is his profession, and what he makes from it that's his earnings. There's quite a lot of stuff that uh, people want out of it. You know, uh, put orders in for me. They've got nice chicken dinners that are like six quid each and that, you know, you get 10 of them. Do you know what I mean? That's 60 quid's worth. You only can fit 10 in a basket easy. You know, come, come out, take them around the corner. They're gone in seconds in the pubs, get 30 quid for them. You know, that's just five minutes work. After my bills, I'd like £50 to myself a day. Once my bills are paid, that's what I like to live on. You feel cheeky and uh, you get a bit of a buzz. Especially uh, when you're doing it over and over again and you just keep getting away with it. It seems like a life of easy pickings. But with scallies like Owen and Jade, you never know what's going to happen next. Shoplifting's a massive UK industry. 11,000 crimes every day, and more than 100 quid's worth of stuff on average each time. Many are one-off crimes, but there are thousands of dedicated full-time shoplifters like Owen Brazil. Seeing other people doing it, that's really what got me started. Seeing how easy it was to make money and how much money they were doing it, and when they got caught, nothing was really happening. Owen lives in a flat paid for by benefits. I've not got much, but what I have got, I try to look after. Uh, I've got myself, uh, I've got, uh, I got a grant from uh, the government of uh, £600 uh, when I first got my flat, which is nice and generous of him. So yeah, what i got, I love and I try to take care of it. But Owen says he's short on benefits. His job seeker's allowance, what he calls his pay, is 140 quid a fortnight. That just goes on my bills. I've got no, and I'll have about 20, 25 quid left over for food, and that's to last me two weeks now. Basically, that'll just, 25 quid, that'll get you a curry for one night, you know, if you went out, you know what I mean? It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, my freezer is completely empty. In my fridge, I've got a banana, half a cucumber. Uh, the half a cucumber's for uh, the missus. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's another story. So shoplifting's a perfect way to bump up his meagre income. I don't actually look at it like I'm bra breaking the law in my eyes. I'm just doing what I do to get by. I go to the bigger outlet stores, you know, all the big names, and uh, they're not going to miss it, yeah. They're not going to miss it at all. I don't like burglars, who people who go robbing people's houses. I think people that do things like that, scumbags. <clears throat> people probably call me a scumbag right now, but you know what, I'm entitled to your own opinion. Shoplifting queen Jade Underwood is also enjoying the profits of her crimes. In her hostel flat, the drawers are crammed with shoplifted gear. All my clothes are robbed. Ones what obviously I see and I like, then I just nick them. And obviously I didn't have money to go out and buy something, so I went out to some knits, a dress and some shoes. Um, this one's my best dress. I got it from um, new looking town. It didn't have no alarms on. So I just put it in the bag and that's out of it. Like my makeup and neck that. It's not that difficult to knit makeup. Jade says her one woman crime wave started when her baby was taken away from her. 
Your little boy. Yeah, my man in my life. She was then 16 and struggling to cope. Her son Daryl was six months old. It's a shadow over a life that Jade regularly blows away with a joint or two. Chills me out. Keeps me on the level I can focus. Jade's aunt says the weed and the shoplifting have become a vicious circle. She has got a problem with it, yes, of course she has. She's got a very bad cannabis problem. I'd say about two to three bags a day. How much does that cost? £20 a bag. You think the shoplifting is to fund that? She can't help herself, shoplifting. She can't help it. She's been doing it for years from being a kid. I'd say about 13 or something, I'd say. I might be wrong, but I'd say around about that age. It is, it's like an illness, she can't help it. And now Jade's had a relapse, breaching the order that banned her from 80 town centre shops. She's been caught again, nicking to order aftershave worth 200 quid. I like a twat. Stupid. <laughs> Don't think I'll do it again anyway. But she may have no choice. This latest crime could see Jade behind bars again. <laughs> the name Jade Underwood is all too familiar to Henry's solicitors. They represent a constant stream of shoplifters, including Owen Brazil. But Crasbo Jade, with her unparalleled record, is something of an exception. She's just uh, uncontrollable. I think that's the problem with her. She's gone manic in the offending she's taking in, uh, in theft, shoplifting. That's kind of an addiction to her, I think, at the minute. It's a very severe problem she has. If she doesn't resolve it, then she's going to prison and I can't see any other routes other than that uh, for her at this point in time. I'm grateful for you coming in. Look, if you, if you need any advice in the meantime, or you, you will, just ring me. I'm here, you know where I am. The people that you tend to get for shoplifting offences now are those that are on the borderline of either financially in difficulty with a small bit of drink problem or alcohol issue uh, and uh, drug issues perhaps on the periphery as well. It is an ongoing uh, issue, it always has been. It's an industry of people shoplift, people buy things at cheaper prices, the handlers then get involved who take the stuff, move it on through the pubs or wherever they're going to send it to and it keeps the police in a job and the public uh, uh, officials in a job, including the magistrates and the lawyers, and in the prison service, it's all as a knock-on effect. The shoplifting industry is so huge, in fact, that security to stop it is also big business. There are trolley loads of shoplifters across the country, just like Jade and Owen. And UK stores spend more than a billion quid every year to make their criminal lives as hard as possible. And part of the fight back comes in the shape of security guards like Christine Poole, pocket-sized dynamo, martial arts expert, and a woman who really has seen it all. You do get some um, horrible cases where um, people pull knives out on you or they might try to stick you with a needle. She's worked with many of Sunderland's security guards. <laughs> and she knows all the shoplifters on her patch. He closed my line me and caught me. <laughs> That's the truth. Christine's nailed thousands of thieves in her 20-year career, regardless of how big they are. I mean, I'm five foot two. <laughs> we get some guys six foot, you know. Um, but if you go into Sunderland Town, they'll tell you that I've never let, let them go. There was a guy, he came in the shop. It, it was near Christmas. He pinched something like um, 25 selection boxes. He put them in a black sack and just legged it out of the shop. So I chased after him and he ran through the, the train station. Um, he actually ran and jumped onto the lines here. So I just jumped on the lines after him. I pinned him down on the tracks and then just waited for the police coming. The railway police came and told us to get up um, because it was dangerous and they had to stop the trains. They weren't very happy, I think. In fact, um, Wilkinson's got um, fined um, one half thousand pound because I stopped all the trains from Newcastle and Darlington. <laughs> Christine's passion is recovering everything that's stolen, but even she has limits. 
when the police came and asked us, oh, I, th I, I think you might need uh, your marigolds because um, she had inserted, um, I think it was about six to ten, um, it was either lip seal or lipsticks um, inside herself. So the police had to uh, get the marigolds out. <laughs> And we didn't want the stock back, to be honest, after that. We've had all different types of things happen, you know, I could write a book. In fact, I'm going to. <laughs> and these expert shoplifters will surely be in Christine's book. She's a really good security guard, I've got to give her a due. She, she's a martial arts expert, you know, she will take you down, she is fit. Anthony and Gavin know all the tricks of the shoplifting trade. Two deer, two deer riders, please. This is where you used to feel the thrill of it, you know, going over the town because you knew you were coming back with something and you knew you would get, do you know what I mean, you would score and you would do this, you would do that. From 8 o'clock in the morning, sometimes till 6 o'clock at night. Tesco's in Bolden. You used to be able to just put the tellies in the trolley and just push them out of the shop. There was no alarm. You used to just fill your trolley up with tellies and just push them out. Do you know what I mean? Two of us had good times. We lived, we lived like kings. I would live like kings for a couple of years. In towns like Sunderland, with high unemployment, selling on knocked off goods is as easy as pinching them. I would take my stuff into a pub and that pub would just be, yeah, I'll have it, I'll have it, I'll have it, push. A lot, of my, a lot of my customers were like single mothers. They, they'd want like baby clothes, nappies, just stuff like that. Babies and nappies, perfect example. Very expensive. When they're pinched, very cheap. Do you know what I mean? I don't think people could survive without choplifters, to tell you the truth. Anthony and Gavin have now gone straight. But what stopped them thieving? Well, for Anthony, it was the love of a good woman called Kate. We've been together now for three, three or four months. I met her on the day that I got out of jail, and I've never looked back since, and I've never been in bother since either. Never. We will be able to well, keep I'm you in control. The right one for him, what? That's what they used to say. They used to turn around and say, Do you know what it is? You found a last there. Who will be able to keep him under control Duh. and keep him out of prison? Because I was in jail just what constant, 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 constant. Obviously, when you're young and you were all the people, the crowd you're not about with, they tack drugs, didn't they? And when you tack drugs, that makes you flip out, you know what I mean? Because which of the day, like, it, it was easy led, like I was when I was younger. He was getting tears at all the time, helicopters was out for him. At one point, I even kidnapped my own ma. Got five years for that. Just doing silly That's things. That's what I got my last sentence for, held me up, my mum hostage. Pinched a box, the he did. City centre security was another thing that made this pair quit but they secretly admire those who are still shoplifting. I take my hat off to people who get away with it. Oh, yeah, I do, you know, I take my hat off to people who get away I with do. it these days, like... Shameless shoplifter Owen Brazil certainly thinks he deserves admiration for providing his very own twist on Robin Hood, stealing goods and selling them cheap to locals. His mate Pete agrees. Everybody wants to buy stuff what he nicks, yeah, right? Which is electrical products because they're that day, you don't want to go out and spend £200 on an electric toothbrush, do you? Everybody loves a bargain. Do you know what I mean? We sell things that sometimes we sell at a third of a price. You just go down to the pub straight away. You say there's 25, 30 people in the pub and uh, basically whatever you take in there, you just lay out on a table, bam, it's gone in seconds. People might see that as wrong. But the people that are buying it don't, they're happy, you know. Doing you a good deed, helping people out who are struggling. If I wasn't on my tack now, uh, I'd just carry on shoplifting and shoplifting and shoplifting and shoplifting every other day. Shoplifting isn't just nicking whatever happens to be on the shelves and sells well. There are specialists who have found a niche in the market. People like Barry the Book. A man who really is a volume thief. I just got into it because I know there's loads of money to be made and everyone reads a book, don't they? Amazon fucked me up, basically. I always come up with a good guarantee that it's always there. Anything from horse racing to crime, student books, football books, etc. Do you want hardback or softback? 
of that. One of the best in the game, and that's why I'm a name. That's why I'm known Barry the Book. Barry the Book thinks nothing of travelling up and down the country to shoplift. He reckons he nicks 200 titles a week to order, and nothing is off limits. An eight year old bloke, they wanted a Kama Sutra. I said, why, why the fuck do you want the Kama Sutra? But <laughs> he's like, No, I've got, I've got a lady in the old now, uh, she's only 65. But seriously, the truth that. <laughs> so I got it him. And I got him a box of Viagra to go with it as well. Five years. I make a lot of money out of what I do. I'm providing a service. All the libraries are shutting down. I'm a library. There is a market there. I've got a niche in the market. But shoplifting isn't always a laugh a minute. Today, you mug. Starving. Now we're in the bees here. Owen's been caught by the long arm of the law many times. <laughs> Pardon me. He's already on a suspended sentence. Any more offences, he could go to prison. And guess what? He's just been arrested for shoplifting. The threat of jail also hangs over queen of the shoplifters, Jade Underwood. She's been caught lifting again, but while Owen could hardly care less, Jade's beginning to crumble. Naz's been drinking, obviously, since I've had his mother. I can't be normal. There's not a day that goes by where I'm normal. Probation's arranged treatment for that drinking, but Jade says there's no problem. They're trying to put me in hospital in eight weeks' time. <clears throat> for rehab, don't need it though, for alcohol. I'm trying to say I'm a piss head, basically. And you, you don't drink? No, I just drink every day, but don't mean you're a piss head. Now Jade's been given the tag on her ankle for two weeks. It's part of a probation deal. Keeps me out of well, saying that it won't keep me out of trouble. Oof. It means she has to be in her hostel room between 7 pm and 7 am. It's supposed to be a taste of prison, a deterrent, but it doesn't work. Have you been shoplifting quite a lot recently? Yeah, every day. For Jade, it's all becoming too much. Because I've got this Asbo hanging over my head for two years. I'm on tack, I'm in an hostel. Sometimes it just gets too much on me. The courts are about to hear Jade's latest shoplifting offences. Crimes that breached her Crasbo order and could now land her in jail. And that is the last thing she needs. Crasbo kid Jade Underwood may be enjoying her last few days of freedom. Hiya! Mickey Pollard! Mickey Pollard! <laughs> why, why did you call him Mickey Pollard? Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no. <laughs> no, but obviously. And that means plenty of booze and heaps of weed. She simply can't stop herself shoplifting, and jail is now a real possibility. I fuck off now, Dwayne! Oh, in Brazil could also go inside. Thanks to the shoplifting habits that pay for a lifestyle, his benefits won't stretch to. Jade and Owen might appear to be expert lifters, but there's a couple who make them look like amateurs. Amanda and Ian have nearly 300 convictions between them. They're arguably Britain's most prolific shoplifting couple. Got a hundred charges. Hey, he's got a bowed. 192 charges the uh, thing he's in. 198 I've got. <laughs> Shoplifting video just about. Because they get on each other's nerves, this couple live in two neighbouring houses in Sunderland. Both paid for by benefits. And for Amanda, who's 41, a typical day often starts with a shoplifting yeah, list what? from one of her regular buyers. And it says, like, oh, Mandy, can you get us, like, Mandy, I gone out with you, um, 
can you get us this or can you get us that? It's in like say British home stores or parent stretches or somewhere like that. The la- lav on where it is in the shop, like lav on like oh it's right at the back in the corner and I like things like that. See like two pair jeans size thirty six and like leg thirty six. Um, uh, two pair pajamas for girls. Can you get us any cheese or any bacon like or like joints of beef and things like that? Amanda knows all the shoplifting tricks of the trade, especially how to get round security tags. I've known before, like, to have um, a carrier bag. Um, they just, like, get a roll or two rolls of foil all the way in there and all the way in there. And when you get in the shop, and, like, if it's got something with a tag on, like a bug or something, and, like, you put it in the bag, like, it doesn't gun off. Like, the alarm doesn't gun off when you walk through. Or you can use a bug puller. Um, or you can burn them off with a lighter or you can use snippers to like snip them off as well and they just come straight off. Once she's prepped, there's an army of street cameras to avoid. If they spot her well-known face, everybody will know that Amanda's on the prowl. Coming out of my house, it's like a camera on the skyscraper's camera there, so I try and duck and dive the cameras I do. There's not too many cameras this way, like, uh, come out my house and walk this way, there's not too many cameras. But if you come out my house and walk up High Street way, there's loads of cameras there, like, and I mean loads. There's about five or six, so you just try and keep off them as much as you can, like. Because if you get seen on them, then you get follies all over the town, all over. So I just try and stop off them when I can. Drugs are a big motive for Amanda's shoplifting. She's been feeding her various habits for as long as she can remember. I was on amphetamines when I was young. I was on acid when I was young. I smoked cannabis since I was about 13. I still smoke today. Heroin, I was on that for 12 years and I was on crack. I was recently, well, I take crack and all. I've been on that for about four years. Be like shoplifting like 100, 200, 300 quid a day and just spend it all on that. And they drinks loads now. Well, I exchange well. that for the drinks, so it's just one thing after the other. And the desperation to get cash for drugs means things don't always go to plan. We took a tray of rings from South Shale's shop, they were on the counter just lying there, so he put them down his coat and we walked out with them, got them, and then. Um, do you know what we got for them? They were all sapphire and diamond, proper diamonds and sapphires and everything. And they were like eight grand and five grand. We sent them for 200 quid for a full tray of rings. That's what we sent them for, just for heroin, didn't we? Mm. We, could have, we took them in the pawn shop and said she wanted receipts and That's everything. Brand new. The, the pawn shop wouldn't you. accept them, so we ended up just selling them in one To book. one gadgie, we sent the, the full quid. tray for 200 quid. Which lasted about five minutes. Really? Aye, exactly aye. <laughs> aye, about five minutes, we just smoked it. In Manchester, Owen Brazil's determined to do something that Amanda and Ian have never managed. He wants to go straight. And that's partly down to the curfew tag on his ankle. This is my tag box. This, if I'm late at night time, after seven o'clock, it'll ring. I'll have to answer it, press that button there and just like giving me excuse why I'm late or whatnot, do you know what I mean? I'm just want to stay out of trouble though for a bit uh, because uh, just just till I've got quite a lot of this, uh, all this mire out of the way so I don't lose me flat. The tag is part of his suspended sentence. He also has to make regular trips to probation. The probation officer Nicola, yeah, she's fit so it makes it a bit easier to uh, work with. They're just going to go in there, agree to everything what they're saying, uh, just answer yes and no questions as fast as possible, and then get myself out of there. I'm not saying I'm not going to get in trouble again, but I'm just definitely not going to get caught shoplifting again. But Owen is struggling to change the habits of a lifetime. I went in the body shop yesterday, I think it was, and uh, I was after getting some of that... Uh, Vitamin E oil for your skin. It's like it's like eleven pound for a little tub that big. You know what I mean? I was thinking, I'm no way that you'll ever catch me buying that. So, 
And you just basically make your own mind up what I've done, you know what I mean? And before Owen decided to try to go straight, he was caught shoplifting again, a crime that breached his existing sentence. In just a few days' time, he'll try to convince the courts not to bang him up. Former shoplifter Anthony Lynch and dedicated security guard Christine Poole spent years on the theft front line. Then they were cat and mouse. Now they get on surprisingly well. You changed your life oh, then now, haven't you? Really oh, turned I definitely will. I, oh, I 100%. You'd never do nothing like no, that, No, 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 no. But Anthony still thinks shoplifting is a victimless crime. So Christine is going to try to put him straight. Are you? You all right? All right. But old habits die hard. One look at the shelves and Anthony's immediately back in the good old days. Do you know what? Probably just bring about, I don't know, ten people in and just literally just fucking just grab the lot and just run. Every year, UK shoplifters nick stuff worth 1.3 billion quid. And shop owner Barbara says there's an emotional cost as well. It's so sad inside. I know. It's not anger, it's just sadness. Sadness, I know. You just want to give up, put the shutter stamp done up and ever again. To, to, you know, why should they come and take things from you? These will be the victims, because it will be these who's losing the money. For example, if we lose one item, we possibly have to sell five other items to make it up just the money for what we pay for the first one. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice, no. I wouldn't be bothered about the owners or... Yeah. We couldn't really, survive really with lots just... and lots of things being stolen from the shop. Shop would have to close them and they would have nowhere to come and steal. So Anthony's met exactly the sort of shopkeeper he used to target. Before I would just think, well, that's, that's what I would have thought last time, right? but now I just, now I think, you know, it's a bit shocking, like it really is shocking. 135 quid, 53 quid. Queen of the shoplifters, Jade Underwood, is now only days away from the court hearing that could land her in jail. And back in the solicitor's office, she's no idea what to do. I've come here today, Karen, to ask you, what if you, like, ask the judge to send me to jail, to obviously, because why am I out here, do you know what I mean? I'm, like, they meant to be helping me at the hostel, they're not, so I'm still offending and... I can't do it with this crash ball over me. I just want to be a clean slate. Right. It's either that or I'm just going to get sectioned or something. Right. Really, because um, it hit him, I rock bottom. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Jade's convinced that having her son Daryl taken away is the root of all her problems. I smoke loads of weed just to forget, obviously, about Daryl and stuff. Yeah. You miss him? I do drink, you? yeah. I miss him loads and I just don't understand to all this day why he got with Mabel and Jamie bad me. I don't understand that. Uh, there's no contact with him now, is there? That's, that's gone, isn't it? And you're not helping I'm to... I'm not that strong enough, obviously, to do that yet. Mm. OK. To ask to go to prison clearly must be, um, must be serious in her own life to be coming to that conclusion that it looked that she was going through turmoil, significant turmoil, and uh, breakdown. I think mental breakdown might not be far away, I'm afraid. You know, all of a sudden, it seems to have just gone out of control. And maybe that's because you've just lost it with what's happened with your child. Do you know what I mean? Maybe that's a major factor. You don't want to go to jail. We'll work on a, on a, on a response, we'll work on an action, and we'll try and get the court to persuade, you know, be persuaded, I should say, that you are not going to go out and commit a further offence. Yeah, okay. Now, you want to get your son back, right? And you're going to change your life for that, and you're going to stop this stupidity, yeah, right? Yeah. Kieran Henry's seen all of this many times before. He knows career criminals like Jade need help, not punishment. So he's proposing a support plan that will give Jade access to her son and hopefully keep her out of prison. It's going to be a very fine line what will happen in court with Jade. I think she's got a good chance if she can, uh, if she can sort of think about her son and say that if I stay out of trouble, I'll get my lad back and I can start my life with her being a full-time mum. The minute she's a part-time nothing. Yeah, you imagine having a kid at the age of 16, getting kicked out, being on drugs. You put that in your shoes if you had your kid to go for you. I had no help from my mum, no one. I went through court on my own, so I'll... What do people want me to do, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's why I don't open up to no one, because I don't need no one. 
So I'll get Daryl back and I will. The next hurdle is that crucial court hearing. I'm going to act all innocent in front of the judge. Say I'm sorry. Again. No, I don't know. Obviously, i just see what happens when I get there. It's the night before Owen goes to court. Despite his efforts to go straight, he has been caught shoplifting while on a suspended sentence. So he also faces prison. But he's been taking it all in his stride. Just gonna cook myself uh, some salmon and some mussels. Uh, gonna have a nice, a nice healthy uh, dinner before I go court tomorrow, as it might be my last day. You know what I mean, I have a decent bit of scran. My mum got it me, uh, she got it me today. She knows that I'm in court tomorrow, I might be going to prison, so I think she just treated me to a nice meal, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Basically, I spoke to my probation officer and uh, she just says, well, yeah, you never know what could happen. So basically, it sounds a bit iffy to me, so I'm going to pack my bags and get myself ready to go to prison tomorrow. I'll see a few of my pals in there, so I'll be playing pool with them, probably uh, go to the gym, keep fit. You know what I mean? I need to lose a stone or two anyway, do you know what I mean? So that's what I intend to do. Uh, and just uh, have a laugh, do you know what I mean? Look on the bright side of things. Right, I don't think you can take coat hangers, obviously, because they're metal. Yeah, that'll do. But even with jail on the horizon, Owen still recommends the crime that got him here in the first place. Anyone can be a good shoplifter, do you know what I mean? Uh, you just got to have the bottle to do it, I suppose. Doesn't, it's not it's something that you have to be skilled at. Anybody can do it. A five-year-old can shoplift. And there's one final essential, in case it is jail. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the, me, little, me little party bar, so... This is just like something that I'd be doing like in my own home. There's like 500 quid's worth, if I wanted to sell it, which I don't. I recommend everybody should do that. When you go to prison, take a parcel with you. Everything, all your little luxuries on the outside, yeah. If it's small enough to fit between your bum cheeks, yeah. Take it with you. <laughs> oh, no. Shoplifting affects all of us. It's estimated that it costs honest customers nearly £200 per family per year. And now the time has come for Jade Underwood to face justice. She's been shoplifting since she was 13 and she could be about to pay the price. I'm scared, but... I've been jailed before, so I know what to expect. Her aunt thinks jail would be a waste of time. It's not going to change her lifestyle sending her back to prison. Well, I don't think it is. I wish it would, but it won't. Because what's prison? It's not going to stop smoking cannabis, is it? It's more than prison. She needs, she needs help. She does need help. They won't be too pleased with her today because they, A, on one hand are prosecuting her for the breach, but on the other hand are trying to help her with regard to uh, punishment. So they're wearing two hats to some extent today. So hopefully they come down on the side of her, not the other side. The hearing lasted half an hour. Hi, Ed. It's a verdict, Kieran. Verdict, unfortunately, Jade went to prison. She got 10 weeks custody for all the charges. We tried out everything we could. She was very distraught in the dock, crying her eyes out. It's quite awful watching it, really. She broke down and uh, despite what we said, the court felt there was no other option. The courts have finally locked the doors on the queen of the shoplifters. Jade's been sent away for 12 weeks. That's the end of the case, and uh, we'll probably see her in about six weeks if we're lucky. 
other than that uh, we hope that she's uh, not back in trouble in the future so we'll uh, say goodbye to Jade She'll be all right. She was all right last time, and um, she'll just deal with it. Jay, Jay, she'll just deal with it. I know she will. She might have been devastated today, but by tonight she'll have a red round it, and she'll be on soon. While the courts are processing Britain's army of shoplifters, the constant struggle to keep them at bay continues. Security guard Christine Poole likes to keep a close eye on the guys she's collared and to show ex-shoplifters like Anthony why they should never be tempted again. I would never ever have gotten a job as a security officer if I didn't have a downgrade. Up front, warm myself up before I start putting people down. I don't think he realises what we're doing. I do that in the morning before I have my breakfast. Anthony is beginning to see why few get away when Christine's on duty. <laughs> That's it, you know what I mean? There's, your, there's your little plum here. Just nice and relaxed, I'm not going to hurt you. Oh, aye. <laughs> it really hurts, doesn't it? Aye, it really does, aye. Up. Right, so the punch comes in again. Bam, bam, yeah? Aye. Bum, bum, yeah? That's Too just your little much. weakness. It's clever. It's, it's, it's very clever. Then, yeah. I'm through while you're thinking about that. Straight in. Oh, definitely, definitely honest. I beat her in 10 seconds flat. So. <laughs> it's finally the day of reckoning for shameless shoplifter Owen Brazil. He hasn't stopped his daily thieving despite being on a suspended sentence. And today, he'll find out if he's going down. I'm feeling all right. Uh, just want to get it over and done with. I was going to wear jeans and a shirt, but I just thought oh, I can't be bothered today. Just can't be bothered. I was going to stick the tracksuit on. For most of us, this would be a life-changing day. But not for Owen. It's like Groundhog Day coming here, isn't it? <laughs> I reckon I've been to court about 30 times for different stuff. I mean, I'm nearly 30 years old, so that's like one time for each year, which is not too bad if you look at it like that. <laughs> it's Groundhog Day 2 for his solicitor, Kieran Henry. He's been here countless times with the likes of Owen and Jade. Generally, you're on a suspended sentence, you, you commit an offence on that, prison is generally what they'll give you. So it could be a, could be a goodbye Owen today. There are more than four million shoplifting crimes every year, but only 7% are even recorded, and far fewer end in prosecution. And Owen's been lucky. He's escaped with just another six months on his curfew tag. Yeah, I think Owen had his bag ready for the prison cells today, but he's come out again. He's walked on water today, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <He's> absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> Survived another day. Yeah. A week later, Owen made the surprise decision to snap off his tag. There we go. He knew he'd get jail, but he wanted to be out with a clean slate in time for Christmas shopping. It's an all too familiar merry-go-round in the lives of shoplifters and proud. Shoplifters are not awful people. They're really not. They're just, they're out to make a living. Mm -hmm. they're out. Their work is shoplifting and my work is security stopping them and so it's cat and mouse. It's never going to stop, it's never going to end, it's going to go on forever. We'll all be dead and buried and it'll still be happening. Next time, pickpockets and proud. We do have a good hit as well, like, you know what I mean? It's popping buzzing at the time, so it is pretty good, mate. 300 quid for order if you're interested, mate. 